Okay, so second compartment. So intradural, but F not in the uh, parenchymal, uh, the soft tissue of the cord. So intradural, extra medullary. Couple of those. I want, I want Rizzoli to take some of these cases. I don't want to have to do all the talking here, but sagittal T1, T1 post contrast with bat sat, sagittal T2. So this one, it's a little bit hard, but if you, if you imagine this thing was on this side, we have a tumor here that's compressing the cord. So it's not expanding the cord, it's pushing the cord away. And we don't see any kind of dura being tented up like it's coming from the bone, like an epidural process. So that's this picture right here. So these are your choices for intradural extramedullary tumors, the main ones. So meningioma, schwannoma, some kind of a spinal cyst, or again, metastatic disease, which can be in any compartment. Oops, I went too far. So I didn't explain it. That one was a meningioma. This one is a schwannoma. So same thing, see how it's pushing the cord away. It's not expanding the cord, it's compressing the cord. But the dura, there is no tenting of the dura, so we know it's intradural. This is T2 hyperintense, it's a little bit heterogeneous. On this axial post contrast, it's enhancing. And what we know about schwannoma is they're very slow growing and benign, so it has expanded the neural foramen on this side. So the nerve roots come out on each side. Here's the cord, they attach the nerve roots. Expanded neural foramen, we know this has been there forever. Aggressive tumors don't do that. So that's a schwannoma. Well, you know, I would add um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, neurofibroma and um, yeah. MPNST in, in that differential diagnosis. So yeah, I didn't want to get too complicated. So I should have said yes, nerve sheet <laughs> tumor. Um, and yeah, the, the malignant peripheral nerve sheath tumors are a whole nother category. We won't get into that today. But um, typically these are older patients. Again, we know it's slow growing. This is a CAT scan. This is an axial. This is the spinal canal in the middle. This, you, you can't really tell, but this is right above the foramen. You see this very sclerotic line around this. It's grown forever. Years and years and years this tumor has been growing and remodeling rather than destroying the bone. So this is a benign tumor. And this is how you know this is going to be a schwannoma or a neurofibroma. And I actually thought of a question for you. I've asked it before, but I'm going to ask it again. At what point would you do surgery on a patient like this? If they're becoming symptomatic or it shows progressive growth. Because they do sure. grow. So if they've been growing over years, like a millimeter each year, mm -hmm. you wait till they're symptomatic. If it's bothering the patient, uh, uh, as in if they're becoming symptomatic as a result of that, if they're having like horrible radiculopathy or pain, then you should operate on it. Um, or if... Uh, it's, it's, if something that was, um, uh, if it's starting to grow and starting to compress on uh, certain structures or starting to, as you can see, it's developing bon bony erosion here, um, those, are, those are indications to operate. That's, so I agree with you. Now, that isn't the answer I've gotten every time, so I'm glad you said that. Some people will do surgery on these before they get symptomatic, and they're often not symptomatic because they've been growing forever. And so it is, it's actually a very hard decision, I think, for the surgeons to make when to intervene because, like you said, sometimes it's going to, you know it's going to compress something, you just don't know when. And yeah. you want the surgery to be done when it's easier rather than harder, and, but you don't want to do it if you don't have to. So that's maybe a topic it, for another time, but I think small, it's complicated. You're right. If the lesion is small and the patient's asymptomatic, I don't see any role for surgery. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, but if it's big even, and it's asymptomatic... Yeah, no, I would say like if that's the logic, then what, when do you not operate on them, right? Exactly, that's what them. I asked. I agree with uh, you. Right? That's so, what I asked uh, you. Yeah. Okay, that's a whole other discussion. See, we should do that on virtual spots <laughs> today. All right. Um, okay, here's another one. So look at the picture up here. It's pushing the cord, compressing the cord, but the dura is not pushed in. So intradural, extramedullary. It's a different color than the spinal cord. CSF is white, cord is gray. This thing is pushing on it. This is a T2. This um, is a post contrast. It's enhancing. This is actually, a, this is kind of complicated. It's a fat saturated post contrast. So this is regular post contrast. And this is, so the subcutaneous fat is bright. This is um, fat sat. So that means this thing is fat. 
that's kind of complicated, but that's the key here. So this is actually um, uh, intradural um, lipoma. Lipoma, oh, yeah. Never mind, yeah. Well, I've, I've never, I've never case. seen, this is the only case of this I've ever seen. I don't know how, these are super rare, I think. Yeah, these are very rare. Uh, unless, unless you're dealing with um, um, uh, uh, spinal dysraphism in infants. We have like, you know, lipomyelomeningocele's and uh, sacral lipomas, that kind of stuff. That, that, that's where it's far more common, but uh, very rare in adults. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.